Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Auditor General Karen Hogan has released a report detailing barriers faced by people with disabilities when using federally regulated transportation. The audit examined things like rail service, air service, the Canadian Transportation Agency, and the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority. To expand on some of the findings, I am so grateful to be joined by Auditor General Karen Hogan. Auditor General, thank you for making time to be with the show today. Hi, it's, I'm happy to be here. So we can jump into some specifics as we go through the conversation, but what were some of the key findings from your report? Uh, so our, we looked at um, whether Via Rail, the Canadian Air Transportation Authority, which is the um, federal organization that does security screening at the airports, as well as the Canadian Transportation Agency, whether they had worked to identify, remove and prevent barriers for people who are traveling with disabilities. Um, and what we found is that they, they have made some progress, but there's much left to be done. And I would put it into three areas. Uh, one was about the accessibility of websites. Some improvement is needed there. And that's where every traveler really starts their journey most times when they try to travel. The second would be to improve the timeliness of staff and management doing uh, training. And then the last thing would be to better leverage complaint data to, uh, to identify and remove barriers. Apologies if this is a little too in the weeds, but how was the audit conducted? Uh, well, it's a great question. Actually, a lot of our audits, uh, people ask us all the time, but all of our audits follow Canadian auditing standards. And um, that just means that we have to gather sufficient evidence to be able to express an opinion on, on certain matters. What we would have done in this case is we interviewed officials within all the federal organizations. We reviewed documentation and we did a great deal of data analysis. We also would uh, interview and consult with stakeholders. In this case, we did it in the transportation industry. And and for groups that represent individuals with disabilities. And then we also make sure that we have expert advice all throughout our entire audit. And we have some external advisors um, who were individuals with lived experiences on um, either individuals with disabilities or those that travel and accompany those with disabilities. So we make sure that we're well equipped and um, gather all the evidence we need to issue our opinion. You mentioned those three key takeaways, those three key areas. If you were to dive a little more into the specifics, what is that common barrier in regards to the booking website? Um, so the booking of the websites is actually one of the most common barriers, according to a recent study by Statistics Canada, that individuals with disabilities face. And what we found is that we looked at Via Rail's website as well as CATS's website, and we found that they had gaps in meeting some of the accessibility requirements. Somewhere around 15 to 17 percent of the requirements hadn't been met. Um, sometimes what that could mean is that information was really just difficult to find, um, or uh, all the way to to information being um, wrong if you were trying to read the website with a reader. Um, and this is uh, so important for that, in, so that individuals with disabilities can actually plan their trip all on their own and not need any help. Mm. And then you mentioned the training side of this. What were you specifically finding in regards to some of those training timelines? So what we found with training was that both of the service organizations, Via Rail and CATSA, that we looked at uh, require mandatory training uh, linked to um, how to provide services or um, just awareness training about individuals um, and persons with disabilities. And we found that the training was either not taken in a timely fashion or not taken at all. Um, it needs to be updated and duplicated. Uh, it was better when it came to staff who are actually providing the services but a lot of management um, had not yet completed it. And that's really essential because they supervise and set the requirements. Um, and so it's really important that everyone in the organization complete that training in a timely way. The audit was very thorough. And I imagine there's a connection point between the key findings. But what about recommendations? What were some of the recommendations that come out of the audit for these organizations like VIA, the CTA, and CATSA? 
Well, we issued a few recommendations, and I'll probably highlight uh, just just two of them. Um, the the first would really be around improving the accessibility of of the websites and addressing all of the gaps that we identified, and and that's something that you really do have to just stay on, stay on top of. So that would have been issued to the two service providers, Via and CATSA. When it came to the Canadian Transportation um, Agency, which is the organization that oversees and enforces the requirements of the Accessibility Act, uh, we made a couple of recommendations to them that I'd highlight. One was to increase the amount of inspections they do um, and to have those inspections focus not only on the design of service, but on the actual delivery of that service. And then the second recommendation I would highlight uh, was that we asked them to assess whether they had the capacity to, to do all the work that they need to do. There are hundreds of accessibility requirements and over 130 service organizations that they need to inspect, and they only had four inspectors assigned to that. So we wanted them to do a, a needs analysis and a capacity assessment to see if they had the resources they needed. You mentioned the accessibility legislation that's in place that's talking about a universal accessibility in a lot of these uh, federally regulated spaces by 2040 under the ACA. Where where do findings like this go from here? What's the response from corporations as they're now moving towards that 2040 date? Well, all three of the federal organizations that we audited agreed with our recommendations. And, and as I mentioned right at the beginning of the interview, they have made progress and we found that, but uh, they've committed now to um, to more progress in that they will address our recommendations and, and hopefully they won't wait till 2040 uh, to meet all of the requirements of the Accessibility Act. That's a long time for an individual with a disability to wait to be able to fully participate in activities like travel. Uh, you can tell me uh, if, if this question is unfair, but how often do you plan on, on exploring this, this subject matter uh, in another audit? Well, it's, it's a, a not an unfair question at all. I get asked that all the time, actually. <laughs> uh, so I think it depends on um, other areas that we will assess, whether we'll go back and do a full follow-up where we'll invest you know, many hours and an and, and in-depth follow-up on these recommendations. Uh, but we do ensure that organizations take action and that we have an online searchable database where we do a follow-up um, every year on certain um, recommendations that we made or certain um, metrics that we, we tracked to see if progress is being made. But I also expect that the Public Accounts Committee here in, in Ottawa um, will hold a hearing on um, the report and then also make sure that the entities take action and follow up on their, uh, their commitments. Auditor General, I know you are so busy. Thank you for the work that you and your colleagues are doing, and thank you for taking some time this morning to expand on the audit that you did and sharing some of the recommendations. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. That is Karen Hogan, Canada's Auditor General, sharing some findings about a report on the state of accessible transportation for people with disabilities in Canada. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.